I'm Steve Schultz, I'm with Madison Gas and Electric, and uh, we have a Peregrine Falcon nesting box on the top of our Blount generating station, which is where everyone is right now. Um, this nesting box was a project um, that my son had in his middle school. What we're going to be doing here today is we're going to go up to the nest box, we're going to bring the chicks down here, and we're going to band them. And I'll let Greg talk a little bit about the banding process and, and purpose and so on. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Today we banded the, the young falcons, uh, we got four again, and uh, I'll be putting two bands on. The first band is a silver Federal Fish and Wildlife or Bird Banding Lab band. These are all have the numbers that are registered with the federal government. But these larger bands, these color bands or project bands are the ones we can read. These are the bands that allow us to truly follow these falcons through their lifetimes. This year we are naming our falcon chicks after famous Wisconsin aviators. S.J. Whitman, Sylvester Whitman, or to his friends, Witt. Witt became a popular pilot in the 1930s as an air racer. Uh, he was originally from Fond du Lac, became a businessman here in Oshkosh, and uh, won hundreds of trophies across the country in his air racing uh, feats. If we look behind us, we can see a couple of his aircraft, a yellow one up above and a silver and red one right over my shoulder. Uh, Witt, in addition to being an air racer, was a designer, a builder of airplanes, was also a, a business owner, taught people to fly, and is very involved in the civilian pilot training program, again, in uh, years before and uh, during the war, World War II. Uh, Witt continued racing into the 70s and uh, would fly back and forth between his winter home in Ocala, Florida, and Oshkosh with his home-built airplane. Paul Poveresny grew up in Wisconsin, was born in 1921, grew up in the Milwaukee area. He designed more than a dozen aircraft, flew more than 400 different types of aircraft, was a combat veteran, had all seven military aviation wings without the benefit of military flight training. He went on to found the Experimental Aircraft Association, which now has nearly 200,000 members worldwide, is based here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And of course, was as the founder of EAA, brought EAA Air Venture, the world's largest fly in here to Oshkosh, with 10,000 airplanes here every summer and more than 500,000 people. Billy spent some time in Alaska and then found aviation. In fact, he went out and paid for his own flight training, which he received in Virginia from a Wisconsin flight instructor. Billy then went on to be one of the first military folks in uh, Europe. Uh, during World War I and uh, kind of set the stage for our involvement as far as aviation goes. Uh, Billy would uh, uh, tell and, and write stories about how the future of uh, our country and the world would uh, culminate in, in another war and would tell that his idea was that it was going to be Japan that would lead an attack on, on the United States, even to the point where it would be an attack on a weekend. Billy had flown airplanes from World War I right up through into the mid-30s when he died, and this airplane behind me is an airplane very similar to the ones that he would have flown. Gene Hauser was a, a general aviation pilot in the 1960s. Uh, and that's not so unique uh, as a woman and becoming a pilot in the 1960s. What is unique about uh, Ms. Hauser is the fact that she's totally deaf. And uh, her flight instructor, in fact, learned sign language to be able to teach her. She became a role model for all deaf pilots uh, throughout the country after she had, had obtained her private pilot certificate. We're really, really proud of her.